Anantec has posted their review of Intel's Core i7-11700K, the Rocket Lake processor that goes on sale at the end of this month. Intel's announced Rocket Lake launches on the 30th of March, so Anantec has gone weeks early, and yet they have managed to not break Intel's embargo, which is really nifty footwork. So congratulations to Ryan and Dr. Ian of Anantec. You've pulled off a real coup here. How have they done this thing? How have they managed to review a processor that is still under NDA? The answer is they bought it. A shop in Germany apparently sold a couple of hundred of these processors last week. Anantec bought one of them. And as it wasn't supplied by Intel, it's not under embargo. I mean, it beggars belief, frankly, but that's what they've done, so fair play. If you read the review, and you really should read the review, it's a decent review, as always. What you will note is that uh, Dr. Ian has carefully avoided using any of the information that Intel provided in the briefing we had last week. And he's delivered a verdict on the i7-11700K, and truth be told, it's fairly damning. So what have we learned from Ian's review? Well, for one thing, we're not yet certain that the performance is final, and it might be that Ian's figures need to be tweaked, but the idea there's going to be any fundamental revision just seems most unlikely. Rocket Lake is strange because it's uh, essentially Ice Lake on 14 nanometer. The whole Intel's been stuck on 14 nanometer since Skylake. We all know this, well, and it's not worth going over it here and now. But what it means with Rocket Lake is that Intel's taken a current design and put it on an old process, which means that the cores have changed, the graphics have changed, and we get the introduction of PCI Express Gen 4. There are other tweaks that Intel's also uh, made public, such as the number of PCI Express lanes on the processor going from 16 to 20. Little tweaks like that. There's also changes to USB. But the cores are different, the graphics are different, the PCI Express Gen 4 is different, it's different. Unfortunately, the processor tops out at eight cores because these new cores are larger than the previous cores because they couldn't move on to 10 nanometer, as we've said so many times. Hence, they can't cram more cores in. Indeed, they've had to reduce the number of cores, and that's clearly a headache for Intel. They're going from 10 cores with 10th gen to eight cores with 11th gen. And if I haven't already said it, if you're not subscribed to Kikuru Tech, please do it and ring the bell. Should have said that ages ago. Sorry about that. So the big question that we've had for some while now is what difference is that gonna to make to performance? taking away 25% of the cores at the top end. Uh, Intel claims are, oh, but we've got IPC of uh, around the same going up, therefore it all levels out. Well, fair enough. And then the big unknowns are, how fast does it run? How much power does it take? How hot does it run? And what price does it sell at? We now, from uh, Anantec, have an idea about the i7's power and heat, and the answer there is not good and the pricing remains to be confirmed on the entire stack. Frankly, the i9 we had assumed for months now is a well-binned i7. In other words, the i9 is eight core, the i7 is eight core, then the i5 is six core and down through the rest of the stack. It's a shame that Intel hasn't seen fit to just kill the i9, but they haven't. So the i7 that Anatech has reviewed is pretty much the top of the stack, but not quite. And then we get into the realms of what does it all mean and whose fault is it? And the whose fault is it is Intel's, in my opinion. I have here much 11th gen hardware, a stack of Z590 motherboards, the MSI press kit that uh, was, by the same, uh, MSI did actually nothing wrong in sending this press kit out, but it's caused all sorts of ructions because they may or may not have sent uh, other bits and pieces that they absolutely weren't supposed to have sent. But, you know, embargoes being what they are, the motherboard is not under embargo. Anything else they might have sent probably would be. And these motherboards all launched at CES 2021. And that is where I think Intel completely dropped a clangor. What's the point in releasing brand new motherboards for the processor that's coming some months later? And um, when they launched these motherboards, we weren't clear when uh, 11th Gen Rocket 8 was gonna launch. It was gonna be some months for sure. Could have been April, could have been March. Turns out it's the end of March. So we've had Z590 boards available for ages. They are on sale, they're listed. The information about these is not secret, but we don't have processors to go in. If Intel sends a processor under embargo, or indeed if another company sends a processor under embargo, that's fine. We can't publish, otherwise we get in deep trouble. But if you buy a processor and you're good to go, and then you can see how it behaves. And that's exactly what Anantec did. 
what we want to know is the eight cores in the i7 and the i9, how fast do they run? Do they run at six gigahertz, six and a half gigahertz? Does it take 65 watts or 66 watts? And the answer is no, it runs around five gigahertz and it takes an awful lot of power. And that's the i7, not the i9. And indeed it is quite juicy and hot. Now, Anantec used quite an old cooler on their processor, but it looks like a really beefy Silverstone copper cooler. So I think they gave Intel all the chances they possibly could. And the verdict, although they held their punches back a little bit, I think was quite brutal. You're know, looking at the i7 11700K thinking, why the hell would I buy that? To quote John Malkovich in uh, Red 2, that uh, comedy spy movie, why don't they just smear our balls with honey and stake us to the ant heap? Because that's kind of how it feels. And yet, I don't think that Rocket Lake is necessarily going to be a catastrophe of a disaster of a launch. Because the thing is, Intel doesn't quite have to beat AMD. All Intel has to do, all he says, is release a competent product that you can buy for sane money. And right now, you can't really say that about AMD. There are various Zen 3 processors on sale, but you try finding them, and you try finding them for sensible money. Good luck with that. Sure, the AM4 motherboard family, there's a monumental number of boards now you'd be very happy to use, particularly in the B550 range. But when it comes to the processors, that's tricky. When it comes to graphics, yeah, well, we know that. And that's just painful. And then you move across to Intel and you say to yourself, I want to buy a new PCI Express Gen 4 supporting processor and motherboard. I mean, why? I mean, can you get a PCI Express Gen 4 graphics card if you haven't already got one? I don't think so. But put that to one side. I want to buy a brand new processor. Are you really bothered if it's eight cores or 10 cores? I shouldn't have said so. Now, the thing is, we've been saying at KitGuru for quite some while, Intel 10th Gen is not a disastrous processor. The i9-10900 K, KF, and indeed the i9 10850, which is a hundred pounds cheaper than the 10900K, or flip it around, that original 10900K was a reviewer special they couldn't make properly, but the 10850, that's a really good deal. You build your gaming PC around that 10850K, I guarantee you'll have a good gaming experience, and it does not run especially hot. It does, however, require an awful lot of power. So moving on to the 11th gen Rocket Lake, you gain Gen 4, you gain more PCI Express, you gain some USB of a new faster variety. You plug it into a motherboard, but do you plug it into a Z590? I'm going to say probably not, because the H and the B series that are coming strikes me they're going to do a perfectly sound job, almost certainly for a hell of a sight less money, as to the exact features. To be honest, I've lost track of whether I'm under NDA about them or not. So I'm going to just shut up at that point and say, when the sub Z motherboards come out, those I certainly want to see. And pairing new Rocket Lake with the non Z motherboards, I think will deliver a really solid gaming performance. Now, as to whether you'd want to upgrade from 10th to 11th gen, I mean, it's always no. Do you want to go from 7th to 8th, 8th to 9th, 9th to 10th? No. You're talking about someone that's a few generations behind and they're going to step forward. That's always been true. And if you're not on Intel 10th gen or indeed 9th gen, what if you're on the original Coffee Lake? You've got a six core Coffee Lake or a four core Coffee Lake. Might you step up to Intel 11th gen? I'm going to say almost certainly yes, indeedy. And the fact I'm confident you'll be able to buy the parts, whereas AMD, I'm not at all sure whether you'll be able to buy those parts. Well, in that context, I'd say Intel Rocket Lake 11th Gen has a decent chance. As to whether it'll be the i9 or the i7 or the i5, well, who's to say? I mean, we can't actually give you a verdict on that until we've actually tested them and reviewed them, can we? But that's how it seems to me right now. So, Ryan and Ian Anantech, yep, you've stolen a march and there's some fair play to you. In the great scheme of things, it's not going to affect the review process significantly. It certainly gives us great food for thought.